What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to write G of X in terms of F of X, all right? And we're going to specifically cover radical functions in this video, all right? So here we're given, first of all, that F of X is equal to two times the square root of X. And then over here, we're given that G of X is equal to F of X plus three, all right? So basically all we're doing here is replacing f of x with whatever we're given over here what for g of x, which is f of x plus three, all right? So I'm gonna write it just underneath the f of x. So instead of the f of x, we're gonna have f of x plus three, all right? So basically wherever we have an x up here, we're gonna replace it with an x plus three like that, all right? So then this is gonna be equal to here, we're gonna have two times the square root of, and then here, instead of just x, we're gonna have x plus three, okay? Now here, there's nothing to combine, there's nothing to simplify, so this is as simplified as our answer can get. So again, remember, f of x plus three is the same thing as g of x, so we'll say that g of x is simply equal to two times the square root of x plus three, all right? That'd be our final answer right here. All right, now here we're given that f of x is equal to one third times the square root of x minus one, and g of x is equal to negative f of x plus nine, all right? So again, we're gonna replace f of x with whatever we're given over here. So it's negative f of x plus nine, okay? So first of all, here you can see that we have a negative symbol out front in front of f of x, right? So we're gonna have a negative symbol times f of x. So let's write that first. So we have a negative symbol times f of x, and f of x is all this thing right here, right? So I'll just put that in parentheses. So one third times the square root of x minus one, okay? So we have negative f of x, right? And then lastly, we have this plus nine at the very end. So I'm just gonna put plus nine out here at the end, okay? So now if we simplify this, again, this whole thing is just equal to g of x, right? So we'll say that g of x is equal to, and then simplifying this over here, again, we're just going to distribute this negative sign in here. So negative times one third is just equal to negative one third. And then you don't distribute it into the square root. So this just stays like that. So that's just equal to the square root of x minus one. And then we just have a plus nine at the very end, right? So plus nine, right? So then this would be our final answer right here. All right, here's the next one. So f of x is equal to negative square root of x squared minus two, and g of x is equal to negative two times f of x plus five, All right? So again, the first thing I'm gonna do is just write this under here for f of x, because that's what we're gonna replace it with, right? So negative two times f of x plus five. Okay, so here you can see we're gonna transform f of x in two different ways, right? First of all, we're gonna multiply f of x by this whole number, this negative two, right? And we're also gonna replace x with x plus five. Okay, so first let's multiply it by this uh, negative two. So we're gonna have a negative two on the outside, and then we're gonna multiply that by our whole function f of x, which is all this, right? So in parentheses, I'm gonna put negative square root of x squared minus two, but again, I'm gonna replace this x right, this x with an x plus five. So here we're gonna have x plus five squared minus two, all right? And then we'll close our parentheses, okay? Now again, remember this whole thing is just equal to g of x. So here we have g of x is equal to this whole thing. So again, we can just distribute this inside the parentheses. So first negative two times a negative symbol is just a positive two. And then again, you don't multiply this inside of the radical. So then we're just gonna bring this uh, straight down. So the square root of x plus five squared minus two. Okay, and there's nothing left to combine here. So this would be a, our simplified answer right here. All right, last one here. So f of x is equal to the cube root of x squared plus 10x, and g of x is equal to one fourth times f of negative x in this case, plus six, right? So again, we're going to replace our f of x with that guy right there, right? So here I'm gonna write one fourth f 
of negative x plus 6, all right? Now we have a few things going on here, right? So again, we have a number out here in front that we're going to multiply by our whole function. Okay, so we're going to have uh, 1 fourth out here in front, and we're going to multiply that by this guy up here. So I'll put that in parentheses. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to replace x with negative x. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, so here in parentheses, we're going to have the cube root of negative x squared plus 10 times negative x, all right? And then the last thing, uh, we just need to tack a positive or plus 6 at the very end, right? So we're going to add 6 over here at the very end, okay? Now again, this whole thing is equal to g of x, so we can say that g of x is equal to here, 1 fourth, we can distribute it in again, right? But there's nothing inside of the parentheses, so it's basically just gonna be our leading coefficient. So it's just gonna stay as 1 fourth times the cube root, right? So the cube root of negative x squared, so that's equal to positive x squared, and uh, positive 10 times negative x is negative 10x. Okay, and then plus six at the very end, all right? That's as simplified as we can get it. So again, here is your answer. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.